November 1, 2025. Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. In today's video, I'm going to cover problems and malfunctions of the pedostatic system. In this instrument mastery series, I touched on problems near the end of each of the instruments video, but I was unable to go into as much detail as I would have liked uh, due to time constraints. I received some great feedback though from Sven, who's also an aviation enthusiast, and that feedback prompted me to create this video for you guys. Producing these videos is always a balance between detail and length. No one would want to watch a week-long video, and I'd have trouble teaching you when you were asleep anyway. So, I'm going to review the pedostatic system again, and we'll go into lots of detail about how it works and how it might not. I'm going to do a lot of uh, sketching to really drive this one home. And I'll resume the instrument mastery series and cover the gyroscopic instruments right after this video. So here we go with pedostatic problems. The pedostatic system involves the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. Test question. Each of these instruments operates on pressure differences in different ways. The airspeed indicator is the only instrument, though, that's connected to the pitot tube. Remember that it requires a difference between the ram air pressure and the static pressure to measure your airspeed. The altimeter is only connected to the static line, as is the vertical speed indicator. So, the diagram of a complete system might look something like this. We have our pitot-static tube, the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the VSI plus an alternate static source over here. Go back and review the videos on each instrument uh, in case you need to brush up on them a little bit because I'm not going to go in this video how they work. I'm only covering what goes wrong with each one, how you can diagnose it, and what you can do about it. First off, if your pitot tube is blocked, then the air can't ram into it, uh, and so you're not going to get your proper airspeed reading. It can't reach the aneroid inside the ASI. Blocks can be moisture, ice, bugs, dirt. If it's ice or moisture, you can turn on the pitot heat and hopefully that'll clear the problem. You can't do much about bugs or dirt though in flight. If the pitot tube is blocked, but the drain hole isn't, then the pressure between the drain port and the static system uh, equalizes and the airspeed needle quickly drops to zero. Since the static pressure equals static pressure, the uh, needle must indicate zero, right? Pitot tubes have a drain so that contaminants can drain out. You don't want anything but air reaching your instrument. If the airspeed drops to zero in flight, you can be reasonably certain that the air is still out there, but you just have no idea how fast it's going by. There is no substitute for your ASI, and that's the, one of the reasons I believe it's the most important instrument. If your airspeed drops to zero, then you'll have to use your GPS, ground speed, or an RPMs to kind of get an idea of your airspeed for a safe landing. If you don't have GPS, then you'll have to rely on RPM settings and sounds to determine a safe landing speed. Now, obviously, you don't want to take chances in flying too slow with this one. For instance, I know that in the planes I typically fly, that if I set the throttle for 1800 and a 500 foot per minute descent, 500 foot per minute descent then I know I get 90 knots airspeed every single time. Your VSI is still working at this point because remember only your pitot tube is blocked. So you should probably do something similar and become familiar with power and trim settings in your aircraft. If your pitot tube and its drain hole somehow get blocked at the same time, then the air gets trapped and the airspeed indicator will freeze where it is and any airspeed changes aren't gonna be shown. Always turn pitot heat on as a first solution. That's about all you can really do anyway. With a blocked pitot tube and drain hole, your ASI will uh, kind of act somewhat like a vertical speed indicator. Since the ASI depends on a difference between static and ram air pressures, the increase in altitude will cause the diaphragm to expand and show an increase in airspeed, which we know, of course, should not happen when you're climbing. The reverse, of course, is true for descents with the blocked uh, pitot and drain port. Let's go over this diagram in detail so that you can really understand it. Okay, so let's say we're cruising at 5,500 feet and we suddenly get a blocked pitot tube and drain hole. Maybe a big bug smashed into it or something. Uh, but the pitot tube heat obviously isn't gonna melt the bug away. 
Now, the air on the pitot side, and it's, it's going to get trapped. It can't go anywhere. And so we've got a given volume of air that is stuck. And so if we bump up our power settings and to fly a little faster without changing altitude, the airspeed's not going to change. Similarly, if we pull the power back, the airspeed won't change. If we make power adjustments and see that no change in airspeed, then we can be certain that our pitot and drain holes are blocked. This is the only case where we will see the airspeed needle behave like this. Now, consider what happens if we start to climb. The air inside the pitot system is stuck, but the outside air pressure is falling because of our climb. This decrease in pressure around the aneroid causes it to expand, which is the same as if more air was ramming into our pitot tube if we sped up. The ASI thinks that we're flying faster as we climb, and we know this shouldn't be the case. Our speed should always drop in a climb if we haven't added power. Then, when we level out after a climb, the airspeed will still show this increase because the stuck air is at a higher pressure than the outside air. And the higher we climb, the higher the uh, airspeed is going to be shown. And we know this shouldn't happen. Indicated airspeed should always drop due to an a decrease in air density as we climb. So if we see this behavior, we can be certain that we have a blocked uh, ram or a blocked pitot and drain hole. Now, what if your static port gets blocked? I'd say it's far less likely because those ports don't face forward, but it can happen. It'll be somewhat difficult though to diagnose a blocked static port on the airspeed indicator alone because the airspeed indicator will appear to still work, but not correctly. Test question. It will show a slower speed if you fly higher than when it became blocked, and it will show a faster speed if you fly lower than where it became blocked. High and slow. Remember that. As you climb, your airspeed will decrease due to decreasing air density on the pitot port but you'd expect this behavior, and so you're gonna to have to use something else to diagnose the static port blockage. If you know you're climbing or descending, and your altimeter isn't moving, then you can suspect a blocked static port. It will freeze at the altitude where the static system got blocked. But it's really no big deal. You'd switch over to the alternate static source. Uh, check the flight manual though, because the alternate static source is at a different spot, and so there will be a slight error in the readings, but your flight manual will tell you how much. A block static port affects all pitot static instruments, and the altimeter will freeze with a block static port, and here's why. Unlike the airspeed indicator, the aneroid inside the altimeter is sealed, so only the static air uh, inside the instrument case can act on it. And if the static port's blocked, then the static air can't get to the aneroid, and so it's going to freeze, can't move. The vertical speed indicator is also only connected to the static system, but differently than the altimeter. Its aneroid is directly connected to the static system, and this case has a calibrated leak so that it can sense a difference in pressure as you climb or descend. With a block static port, the VSI needle will freeze at zero. And if you're certain you're climbing or descending, but you see zero on the needle, then you can be certain you've got a block static port. If the altimeter's frozen, then it should be, you should see zero on the VSI as well. And so this is a good time to switch over to the alternate static port. So that's how you diagnose a pitot and static system blockage and how each instrument will behave when it happens. If the pitot tubes block, turn on the pitot heat. That should uh, clear any ice or possibly moisture. If the static systems block, switch over to the alternate static source. Then fly very carefully to a place where you can either clear the blockage yourself or have it serviced. I hope this more in-depth explanation makes the pitot static system malfunctions easier to understand. I'm going to continue the series on instrument mastery next with the gyroscopic instruments. Go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when the next video is out. It's free, unlike traditional subscriptions. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.